Hey everybody, I'm Ben from the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to Star Player Spotlight. We are looking at all of the stars that have been revealed in the Blood Bowl 2020 rulebook. We're looking at their stats, their skills, their cost, their teams and their new special abilities as well. We're looking at exactly what you can get on the tabletop. Today we are looking at a very powerful player who now can play for more teams than ever before. So I think you're going to see him quite a lot and this is Hackflem Shuttle Spike. So yes, he can play for more teams than ever before because he is a favoured of slash underworld challenge star player. It means you can be taken by an absolute ton of teams and that means that a ton of teams have got access to a very, very agile player um, that they didn't have before. So Chaos, Chaos Renegades, Nurgle, Goblins, Skaven, Snotlings and Underworld. Previously, Hackflem could only be taken by Skaven and potentially Underworld. Can't remember now, it's been so long ago. Um, and now these bash teams at the top chaos renegades and nurgle all getting access to what is no spoilers here but a strength three gutter runner star player with some skills uh is going to mean that heckflem is going to be very very popular even goblins can take him which makes sense when you think about underworld like there is a connection there between goblins and skaven and it's stronger than it's ever been before so realistically a goblin team with hackflem might win games regularly and that is absurd but that is quite cool so let's have a look at his stats so the most amazing thing here is that Hackflem is only 180,000 gold pieces I say only I appreciate that there are a lot of teams that are going to struggle to pay for that amount but if you look at the smorgasbord of star players that are out there in this edition I think there's only one or two maybe three star players that are actually cheaper than him so this guy is 10k more expensive than run below sheepskin and there's only a few hitting that sweet 150 mark so 180 is incredibly affordable for a star player especially one of this caliber this guy basically picks a thing to do and then does it better than anybody else so let's have a look at the stats we've got movement nine which is now the fastest movement allowed in the game Movement 10 is now gone. Movement 9 is as good as you can get. So if you are running a Skaven team with Hackflem, that's five Movement 9 players. If you are running any other team, you will be very glad to have that Movement 9. Now, Gutter Runners are vulnerable. They normally have Armor 8 Plus and Strength 2. This bad boy, Strength 3. So Strength 3, Edge 2 Plus. Passing 3 Plus, which is a monstrous skill now. You shouldn't be passing all that often if you're aiming to win. But if you're showboating, then that cheeky 3 Plus is going to be, um, it's going to keep your plays alive. Armor 8 Plus, like we said. So we've got a strength 3 gutter runner here. Gutter runners are 80k, 90k, 85k. So for twice the price, you get that strength boost. Now, strength boosts are, what, 80k now in Blood Bowl 2020? So you're already on par here for a value play. Right, comes with dodge because he's a strength. Three gutter runner, extra arms, prehensile tail, two heads, and wrapped up with loner of four plus. So let's uh, let's start with the, the least likely to be used skill there, which is prehensile tail. That is your fail case. Your fail case is that your movement 9, strength 3 player with dodge is sticking to somebody that's got the ball. So say you're on defense. They've sent some deep threats down. You're playing those tricksy elves who still want to pass. Chuck in Hackblem on a receiver with that prehensile tail giving minus 1 to dodge away is going to cause issues, which is exactly what you want. But that is, quite frankly, the worst case scenario with Hackblem. That is uh, kind of like your check down ability is that that minus one to dodge away will put him in good stead if he's up against other catchers on defense. Let's have a look at both of the mutation skills here. Oh, where are my skills? There we are. So extra arms. This player may apply a plus one modifier when they attempt to pick up or catch the ball or when they attempt to interfere with a pass. And that's why we're giving that a read because this guy is edge two plus basically adds one plus when he's doing anything with the ball with extra arms so that's a one plus catch that's a one plus pickup that's just fantastic and also with the new rules for deflecting a pass him becoming agility one plus 
uh, is going to mean that actually you can use him to defend against the pass. So in that scenario where you're using him to mark a catcher on your side of the pitch, he's going to get a really good shot and interception, let alone just a deflection. So Hagflem can play defense, but that extra arm's ability to be able to catch on a one pass, to pick up the ball on a one pass, is absolutely massive. And two heads, this player may apply a plus one modifier to the agility test when they attempt to dodge. So realistically, Hackflem Shuttle Spike is agility plus. No, he is agility one plus, not plus one. But he does get plus one to two plus, making him plus one. So agility one plus for dodging. With the dodge reroll means that Hackflem uh, doesn't suffer from that classic star player like Ooh, he's got loner I don't want to do stuff with him blocking with him is never going to be ideal because even with a support if it goes wrong you've got to fight that loner four plus so be aware that that's not great but dodging around at a one plus picking up the ball on a one plus receiving the ball on a one plus and then being able to blitz away at movement nine is just unbelievably good Okay, like I cannot stress this enough. I love gutter runners. And if you send them off in a pack, having a guy who's strength three means that he can blitz out of trouble as well. Realistically, though, with that one plus dodge, that's what you want to be using to get him out of dodge and into the open. So there are a myriad of benefits here with Hacklem. He's not a brawler, but he can receive the ball. He can play a bit of defense. Movement nine is huge. Strength three as well means that if you do stick him in a brawl or you do need to blitz for him or you do need a risky defensive play, you've got one. All of that for 180k. And as they say online, but wait, there's more. Let's have a look at Treacherous. Once per game, if a teammate in an adjacent square to Hackflem is in possession of the ball when Hackflem is activated, that player may immediately be knocked down and Hackflem may take possession of the ball. No turnover is caused as a result of using this special skill. <laughs> so we set up here that um, Hackflem can receive the ball on a 1+. Plus. Or, once per game, you just knock a dude down and take it. No rolls except armor because the guy is knocked down. No turnovers can be affected. Let's let's just talk this through. So once per game, if a teammate is in an adjacent square to Hackflem, when Hackflem activates, so if you don't want to take that handoff risk, if you want to blitz with a guy with a ball carrier, you blitz him, and wherever you end up, as long as you end up next to Hackflem, Hackflem just takes that ball. That's like the special ability of the scientist in Pandemic. It's just like, I'll have that card. Not the scientist, the communication specialist. Anyway. He gets that ball. You have to roll armor, which is going to be tough. But that doesn't even consist of a pass action. That doesn't consist of a handoff action. So you've got mega chains here. So if you want to hack Flem to just loiter in the backfield, you can throw to a guy just because you can. Then you can run around and hand off to the guy because you can do that as well. Then you can run that guy up and stand him next to hack Flem. Hack Flem just bumps him on the head, takes the ball, and goes for glory. So... So far, all thumbs up for Hackflem. Downside, if you're in League, he is going to be an SPP hog. If you're playing Goblins, if you're playing Chaos, he's going to give you a scoring threat, but you're going to lose out on those SPPs. So 180k is amazing. Tournament builds, chef's kiss, okay? You can fit him in 1150, you can fit him in 1200 without really sacrificing anything. On top of that, though, if you're in League, you can afford him at 180. That is going to be possible, and you will win. And in Blood Bowl 2020, touchdowns equal gold. So you will have the advantage of that, but he is going to probably affect your ability to get SPPs from your own guys. It depends. If you want to win, Hackflem is going to absolutely help you achieve that. If you want to develop your team, Hackflem may not be the better choice. You may want to look at Glart or something, something smashy instead. But dude, five gutters would be sweet. This guy on a chaos team. Like, we are going to see Hackflam in tournaments because I think he can fit into loads of cool builds. Hackflam chaos, you know, I just think it's going to be amazing to see him on the pitch. And talking about seeing him on the pitch, let's have a look at some of the models you can use if you want to do so. First up, it's the Forge World miniature itself. Okay, I have not been overly kind to this model. Hackflem is a gotter runner with two arms, two heads, not two arms, everybody in theory has 
starts with two arms. Uh, this guy should have multiple arms because he's got extra arms. He should have two heads. He's got two heads. The model just looks really busy and it is probably down to the Forge World paint job. I haven't seen it in person because the Forge World paint job kind of puts me off and he looks a bit chunky to be armor 8 plus strength 3. That's the thing that's always kind of made me a bit confused about him because he looks like a two-headed blitzer as opposed to a two-headed gutter runner. However, it's a cool miniature, probably a really good painting challenge. It's the Forge World price though, so 20 something pounds including postage, so you got to bear that in mind, but I think you're going to get a lot of play out of this miniature as far as star players go, so if you want to go OG and get Forge World, don't think there's anything wrong with that. We do have an alternative for you though, which is the Hungry Troll miniature called uh, Centipede, actually. So Hungry Troll, Ratkin Star, Centipede. And the reason it's called Centipede is because that prehensile tail is sculpted there as a centipede growing out of him, which in itself is a pretty cool modeling challenge. But this model, although looks a bit chunky, he's got the extra arms. He's got loads of extra arms, actually. He's got a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a Mars thing going on across his chest. Uh, Arnie would be terrified. But two heads, you've got all the bits there. Hungry Troll, I think 9.99 euros. So half the price if you want a cool model. However, Hack Flam would be reasonably easy to uh, to convert, I think, with a bit of green stuff, an extra head, whatever, extra arms. You could do it yourself. But if you want a cool star player model at half the price of the Forge World one, Hungry Troll, Centipede. The Forge World one is not bad, though. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to, to wrap up with here for Hack Flam absolute powerhouse we've got roxy we've got griff and we've got hack Flem. and i think those are going to be the big three in tournament play and they are all going to bail out your team in league and hack Flem is the cheapest of them so if you are a player with a goblin team an underworld team a skaven team a chaos team you should be looking at hack Flem and thinking he's there when you need him because in strength nine strength nine that would be i would play that player Movement 9, Strength 3 though, is not bad either. You're going to be able to score with this guy. It's going to work and it's going to be horrifying. So I love him. Right, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Please let me know in the comments if you think Hack Flem is OP. Is he as bad as Roxy? That's the question. Drop the comments. Uh, drop the message in the comments. Words been good. Bye now. See you soon.